Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a reading roundup. In my reading roundup videos, I talk about the books that I've been reading recently and I've got a good stack in front of me, so let's just dive straight into this one. I read Death of a Hussy by M.C. Beaton. This is part of my personal reading challenge, the books that I read uh, when I'm at chemo. And uh, this is part of the Hamish Macbeth series. Death of a Hussy is mm, the fifth book in the series, I believe. And this one, <laughs> this one was interesting. So we have Maggie Baird, who is a woman who lives in a cottage in the village um, of Loch Du, and she's taken in her niece who is recovering from an illness. And um, she is a woman who uh, enjoys the attentions of men and um, has had a number of husbands and boyfriends, etc. And um, her car one night catches fire when she is in it. And there are five likely perpetrators right on the premises. She has invited five of her previous um, liaisons to stay for a while at the cottage and we're not entirely sure the reason if she wants to try and maybe um, build have a relationship again with one of them or uh, would like to marry one of them she's intending to put one of them or all of them in her will it's unclear um, and so yeah this was this was a, a fun installment in the Hamish Macbeth series and then I read Real Tigers by Mick Heron. This is the third in his Slough House series and I really enjoyed this one. I really enjoy this series. So Slough House is the place where MI5 sends its agents who've messed up. They can't fire them for whatever reason so they send them to Slough House hoping to bore them into quitting themselves. In Real Tigers, one of their own gets kidnapped and the kidnappers request that they get a file from Regent Park. And Regent Park is the office where the active MI5 agents are. And so it's very, it's very complicated. Um, I love, like I said, the internal politics. You know, she won't be released until they get this file, this information that they want. And so again, it becomes Slough House against Regent Park. Um, but of course, nothing is as it seems. Um, who is actually calling the shots? What is it that they really want? Um, yeah, and I, I did really enjoy this one as well. And then I read The Paradise Affair by Bill Pronzini. This is part of his um, Carpenter and Quinn Cannon series. This is the most recent one. This is a historical mystery set in San Francisco in the very late 1800s. And Carpenter and Quinn Cannon are private detectives, Sabina Carpenter and John Quinn Cannon. And in this one, they go to Hawaii. They are on the trail of some uh, swindlers that John has been trying to, to find to get back some money that was stolen by his client. So, so they head off to um, Hawaii. So that was an interesting part actually of the story to get some description of Hawaii at the time. Um, its history, what was happening there. It was an interesting story, um, but I have to say this is an example of a case where the cover gives away part of the story. The cover is spoilery and I do not understand why uh, publishers do that. And I mean, until you've read the story, you don't know that it's spoilery, but the minute you come to a scene that's anything like this, you kind of because of the cover, you know what's about to happen. So I just don't, I don't understand why they, why they do that. And then, and this is amazing, I finally finished Vintage Mystery and Detective Stories edited by David Stewart Davies. This was a six month long read, read, buddy read 
uh, that I did with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. This is a, a massive book. It's over 1,200 pages. But this was fantastic. This had short stories or novellas from the Victorian time period, from the early 1900s up to, I would say, probably the, the, 20, the 1920s. So it was a great little mixture of, of short stories. It was, a, it was a great to read so many different authors and discover authors that I want to read more from. I discovered some authors that I don't want to read any more from. It was a really, it was a really fun buddy read. I really enjoyed talking about them each week with Berna. We read two short stories a week and then we chatted about them on Boxer and that was really, really fun. The last story in here, it was The Mystery of a Handsome Cab by Fergus Hume. And that was a full length novel that he wrote in 1886. It's set in Australia. And that one was really interesting, actually. Um, I did enjoy, I did enjoy that one. And I liked that we finished on a full length novel. So this was um, a long, a book that's long been on my TBR cart or, um, you know, my stack of currently reading. And uh, so this was really fun. So if you're, if you're looking for, um, you know, a book that gives you a good exam, a good mix of vintage, um, detective and crime stories, this, this could be a good one for you to pick up. I read Trader's Codex by Jerry Westerson. This is um, from her Crispin Guest series. This is a historical mystery series set in the late 1300s. Crispin Guest was a knight and he made a bad, bad decision, a bad mistake, and it cost him everything. It cost him his title and his lands. He was, um, he was actually really lucky to survive with his life. And so he now lives in London as a tracker. And in this book, he's in his pub, his local pub, and a man walks up to him with a package all wrapped up. He gave it to him once he confirmed that it was Crispin and said, you'll know what to do with this. And so he took it home and he opened it up and it was a book written in another language. And so of course he doesn't know what to do with it. He doesn't even know what it is. And so he goes to try and get some information from, he goes to three different people and is able to discover that it is a gospel that was written, it was written in Coptic um, and it was written on papyrus and had been turned into a book. And it, uh, it's the gospel of Judas. And so he doesn't know, he doesn't know what to do with it. But then the three people that he asked for, for help to, to translate the book, to find out what it is, all three of those people are killed. So of course now he is, um, interested and he's invested in finding out who, who killed them, what's going on with this book. Um, a great little part in here was he finds that there is someone who is in, um, imitating him. There's another man calling himself Crispin Guest as a tracker and uh, uh, using he's using Crispin's reputation to make money. And so that was kind of a fun little side side story as well. I really do enjoy this series. Um, so if you if you're looking for some medieval uh, historical mysteries, you might want to give Crispin Guest this Crispin Guest series a shot. I read that for series September, um, and so that one was for a book that is a, in a series longer than five books. So I already have one marked off on my bingo card. I read The Thorn Maze by Karen Harper. This one again is from my personal reading challenge that I read when I am at chemo, and this is the fifth in her Elizabeth I mystery series. This one. This one was good. This one was really fun. This one is set at primarily at Hampton Court and a body is found in the maze. There's a hedge maze at, at Hampton Court and a body is found in the hedge maze. We also get a little bit of um, William Cecil's estate. Um, I forget what it's called. Um, but he has a water maze 
in at his estate which is fascinating um so yeah again this is a, a really fun historical mystery series that includes historical people and certain historical events and then the author uses those things to build a fictionalized mystery around it and i really do enjoy this series i read windsor castle by william harrison ainsworth this was written in 1843, but it was set in 1529. And so I loved that I was getting a historical fiction um, book written by a Victorian. So here is a picture for you of William Harrison Ainsworth. He was a contemporary and friend of William, sorry, of Charles Dickens. Um, this is a book that is set at Windsor Castle and there is a great um, quote at the beginning from the Merry Wives of Windsor um, about, about search Windsor Castle elves within and out and that's from the Merry Wives of Windsor. The reason he chooses that is because um, Hearn the Hunter is a character in that play and Hearn the Hunter is a character in this story. So we have King Henry VIII who is trying to divorce from himself from Catherine in order to marry Anne Boleyn. And there is a wonderful cast of characters including Hearn the Hunter who was a forest keeper at Windsor Great Park and he is now a ghost or the demon huntsman as they call him. Um, and he plays a big role in this story. There's great, there's this great cast of supporting characters as well. This is a historical romance or his, uh, romantic melodrama. And so you have to read it with the right understanding of what you're getting into, what genre this is, because romantic melodrama is definitely its own genre. It's a blend of adventure story and history. It's overly dramatic. It's wonderful. Um, it is a pageant of great personages processing with due solemnity through the summer setting of a royal plaisance. And that's from the introduction. I, I appreciated that there was an introduction to this book, otherwise I may not have really understood what I was getting into. Because if you don't understand what you're about to read, then you may not like it. Because you, you have to go into it understanding that it's going to be big and largely, larger than life and overly dramatic. And just go with it. It's fun. There is six books in, in here one of which is the history of the castle. So that was a bit of a, a jolt when you got to that book because it pulls you out of the story and gives you a history of Windsor Castle. I found it really interesting, but um, you just have to kind of know that it's coming. It's only 34 pages. I would recommend plow throughing it and then going back to the story because it's really, really very fun. Um, let's see, there are... Um, there are some great illustrations in here. Um, here's, here's an example from the very beginning. Book one, Anne Boleyn. Of the Earl of Surrey's solitary ramble in the home park, of the vision beheld by him in the haunted dell, and of his meeting with Morgan Fenwolf, the keeper, beneath Hearn's oak. In the 20th year of the reign of the right high and puissant King Henry VIII, namely in 1529, on the 21st of April and on one of the loveliest evenings that ever fell on the loveliest district in England, a fair youth, having somewhat the appearance of a page, was leaning over the terrace wall on the north side of Windsor Castle and gazing at the magnificent scene before him. <laughs> Isn't that great? Here's a description for you of Hearn the Hunter. Suddenly, however, he was startled by a blue phosphorific light streaming through the bushes on the left, and looking up, he beheld at the foot of an enormous oak, whose giant roots protruded like twisting snakes from the bank, a wild, spectral-looking object, possessing some slight resemblance to humanity, and habited, so far as it could be determined, in the skins of deer, strangely disposed about its gaunt and tawny-colored limbs. On its head was a sort of helmet, 
formed of the skull of a stag from which branched a large pair of antlers. From its left arm hung a heavy and rusty looking chain in the links of which burned the phosphorescent fire before mentioned, while on its right wrist was perched a large horned owl with feathers erected and red staring eyes. <laughs> All right, uh, here are some illustrations. My edition has wonderful illustrations. That is the meeting of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. And that is the meeting in the cloisters of St. George's Chapel. And one more, that is the quarrel between Will Sumner's and Patch in the great kitchen of the castle. I, I really enjoyed reading this. It was, it was fun. Okay, and then I read, this was a read along with uh, Kevy. Um, and we read The Great Mistake by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. This one was written in 1940, and I really liked this one. This one was a really complicated, convoluted mystery that I just could not figure out, but I loved trying to figure it out. It is narrated in the first person by Pat, who gets a job as the personal secretary of Maud Wainwright, who lives in the cloisters. And she has a son named Tony. And uh, I just loved that the way that the story was, was laid out. Pat's telling her story. You know that she's telling it like a year later. She's telling the story of the events of what happened. But she just like the way she lays out clues and and uh, kind of reveals things that are going to happen are fantastic. Um, there's great characters in here. There's a great mystery. A lot of mysterious things happen before we even get to a murder. And I yeah I really I really did enjoy it. Um, here is a quote um, that uh, helps to explain the title of the book. Perhaps that was why she made her great mistake, for make it she did, with terrible results. Someone has said that murder is the great mistake, the one irrevocable error that any individual can make. We were to have murder, of course, but behind our crimes there lay that curious helplessness of Maud Wainwright and her inability to see evil in any individual, man or woman. Isn't that great? So uh, yeah, I really did enjoy this one a lot and uh, I'm looking forward to reading more Mary Roberts Reinhardt. And then last but not least, I read 21st Birthday by James Patterson and Maxine Petro. This is the latest in the Women's Murder Club series. And this one was pretty good, although I had a few questions at the end. It wasn't wrapped up entirely there were potentially a couple of holes um but but this was this was interesting so a woman um a woman th this is a series set in san francisco and a woman comes to cindy who is one of the women's murder club members she's a journalist and she is desperate to find her daughter and granddaughter she comes to her because her daughter and granddaughter are missing and she is convinced that her son-in-law did it and so Cindy gets Lindsay Boxer involved, who is a detective with the San Francisco Police Department. We also have Claire Washburn, who is the medical examiner, and Yuki Castellano, who is a district, an assistant district attorney. Um, those are the members of the Women's Murder Club. So yeah, this one was good, figuring out what happened to the, the daughter and the granddaughter. Her daughter was only 20, 21, and her granddaughter was 16 months old. Um, and so, yeah, this one, this one was interesting. I did enjoy 
the um, you know who who was it uh, was it really them uh, it got pretty complicated but like I said there was there was a couple holes things that just didn't get wrapped up for me for this one um, but yeah uh, so that's 21st birthday by James Patterson and Maxine Pietro so there you have it those are the books that I have read recently have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you about them in the comment section down below. Have you read any historical romance? That, um, that sub-genre that William Harrison Ainsworth was so famous for, or romantic melodrama is another good way of putting it. Have you read any um, books like that? I would love to get some recommendations from you for, for more from that subgenre, and I will see you for another video soon.